It's six o'clock in the morning in a small village just outside Nakuru in Kenya. This is where Peter lives with his dog, his two sheep, his five brothers and sisters and his mum and dad. He shares the bed with four other people. In his mother's room they're making a chai. The fireplace is just a simple hole in the ground with a few rocks around it. And for fire lighter he uses paper, pieces of wood, bits of old leaves they can find in the garden. Peter needs to make the fire to boil some water to protect his hands a little bit from the heat he uses pieces of paper Whilst he's waiting for the water, he can take care of his little puppy. He has to move it from just outside the door into a little compound. The dog is kept tied up all day. Afterwards, he has to complete some other jobs around the house, and in this case, he's cleaning the yard. The brush he uses is very simple, just made out of a few sticks. It takes him about 10 to 15 minutes to sweep down the garden completely. The temperature outside is only about 8 degrees. Once the water boils, Using just paper to protect his hands, he has to move the water from the pan into a bowl. This is the water that Peter will use to wash himself. They don't actually have a bathroom. He washes next to a hole in the ground that they use as a toilet. For Peter, the air is bitterly cold, and when he goes inside to get dressed, you can see him visibly shaking from the cold. He dresses quickly in his school uniform. Beyond the doors to the right are where the two sheep live. His mother helps him get dressed in the morning. He has to stay standing on the sofa so that he doesn't get dirty again because obviously the floor of the room is just mud.
the conditions are very hard. In the case that Peter's father manages to get work, which is not always the case, he will probably earn about one dollar a day. His mother's been making some chai, and she waits for him whilst he drinks. <coughs> Peter does not get any breakfast before going to school. house doesn't have any electricity, it doesn't have any flowing water and of course no sewerage. After completing his jobs around the house, Peter sets off for school. This will be his first day at a new school. It takes him about an hour to walk there. The road is small, dusty, but surprisingly busy. In the rainy season, this road is just a, a bog mire. There is no other word really to describe it. You either have hard road with lots of dust or a soft road that you can barely walk on. A short way before the school Peter meets Cynthia, one of his friends. She's also starting the school today. Today is the first day that this school is open. These are the first two classrooms. On Mondays and Fridays, the day starts with an assembly. Kenyan flag is hoisted. National anthem is sung. Teacher welcomes him to their first day at school. The school currently has three teachers. How was your night? Fine. You see the language of
as it's the first day of school, school books are distributed and a pencil case containing a few items such as pens, rulers, rubbers. Every child gets a pencil case with his name as well as school books and homework books. Peter is in class one. While the children are settling into the classroom, some of the mothers are starting to prepare the midday meal. The meal consists of diced cabbage, tomatoes, onions and carrots. They also prepare some porridge, which for most of the children will be the first meal of the day. At 10 o'clock, the children go outside for a break. This is when they're going to get their porridge. Each child gets one cup of porridge. Once the porridge has, has been drunk, it's time for play. There are various activities done during the playtime. After the break is back to school. Most of the lessons are performed in English. The subjects that they get during the course of the week will be maths, English, Kiswali, Christian religious education, social studies and science. On Fridays, the children wear Kenyan national dress.
at the same time some of the mothers are receiving basic instructions on how to read and write a lot of the women in the Kuru have no opportunity to learn to read or write and indeed up to a few years ago a lot of them had no chance whatsoever to go to school the aim of this training here is that they learn the alphabet and learn to write their own name Yes, Around about one o'clock, the children are assembled to provide a few thank you messages to specific sponsors. These sponsors here that we're seeing on the board are from Second Life Virtual World. Within Second Life there are several singers who quite regularly perform and the money generated in these performances are donated to LLK. After the photo shoot, it's time for dinner. This meal is the, probably the only meal that most of these children will get today. Each child receives a plate which on this occasion contains beans, maize, the vegetable mixture and a piece of fruit. The school currently has around about 60 children. The program as a whole, though, provides food every day to around about 400 children. Mm. The children supported her from the age of kindergarten up to the end of vocational training. 
kila mtu inatoka tu kwa yake kama dorina kilia matiosi na after lunch he's back into the classroom for about another hour Grace, the headmistress, rings the bell to announce the end of the school day. And then it's time for Peter and his colleagues to go back home. Some of the children have up to two hours to walk to get to school. Peter has to make his way home alone today. At the end of the walk, he arrives back home. At the end of his walk home, he's greeted by his mother and his baby sister. His mother asks how his day was, and he tells briefly about things that have been happening. But the first thing he has to do is change out of his school uniform. And then he has some more chores to do. First of all, he has to collect the water for the rest of the day and for tomorrow morning. His father dug a well some time ago. It's around about seven meters deep. Sometimes Peter has problems with the lid. However, it's very important that's put on to stop him or the animals falling in. This is Peter's only source of water.
Because of the camera, Peter wants to make out that he's very strong, but it's quite obvious that he's struggling with the water. After Peter's done his homework and done a few other jobs around the house, it's time for him to slowly get ready for bed. He needs to wash his shoes, his uniform has to be washed, and he has to get everything ready for the following day. He then has to check his animals again. And then he can get ready for bed. Peter goes to bed a bit early so he can sleep before other people come into the bed. If you would like to sponsor a child like Peter, please contact Live and Learn Kenya on the website at www.llk-selb.de. Thank you.